who makes the best RV, Grand Design, Brinkley, or Alliance? So I recently put a poll on YouTube to ask y'all. And honestly, I think the reason that the poll was so split is that the marketing teams for these companies have done an excellent job. As a certified RV technician, I went undercover to inspect thoroughly these quality RVs. Let me tell you folks, this is probably gonna be a controversial episode. I've decided to review two trailers from each of these manufacturers, kind of the low end and the high end using my rigor scale. For those of you who are new to this series, the rigor scale is something I've developed based on my experience as an RV tech, where I grade 10 different categories that I've distributed 100 points across. At the end of the episode, I'll give you a letter grade for each of these RVs and my opinion as to whether or not I would recommend buying this camper. So for Grand Design today, we're gonna to be reviewing a Grand Design Reflection and a Solitude. The Reflection is approximately $76,000. The Solitude is approximately $115,000. That's their more upper end trailer. So for Alliance, we're gonna be looking at the Alliance Avenue and the Alliance Paradigm. The Avenue is about $77,000 and the Paradigm is about $103,000. And for Brinkley, we'll be looking at their Model Z2900, which is approximately $102,000, and the Model Z3100, which is approximately $103,000. The first category that I look at in my Bigger scale is cabinets and countertops. So in order to understand how I'm scoring countertops, let's talk about some of the quality differences that there are. In all of these RVs on the kitchen, they use something called solid surface. It's very thick, it's very resilient. This would be a 10 out of 10 in my book. So the lowest quality countertop that you can get is something called thermofoil. They start with an MDF board like this, which is just super thick cardboard, and then they drape a piece of plastic around it, and that's the thermofoil wrap. But the problem with thermofoil Oil is if you put something hot on it, it'll melt right through it. And then all you can do is replace the entire countertop. Not to mention if you have any seams that are leaking water around the sink or at the edges of the countertop, it'll get to this MDF and cause it to start swelling. It's not a material that lasts very long or under heavy use. So the interesting thing is that while Brinkley uses a good solid surface countertop throughout the whole RV, Alliance and Grand Design cut some corners in the bathrooms by using an MDF material. Grand Design is only doing this on the lower end reflections. This trailer is $30,000 less, so cutting some corners on the bathroom countertop is kind of to be expected for a lower end trailer. But what's super interesting is that Alliance is cutting corners on their higher end trailer. The Paradigm has a epoxy pour covered MDF in the bathroom, but it's still MDF. And so when water gets around the caulking at the edges, it's going to make this material swell up. As I mentioned in my last episode, cabinet quality ranges from painted MDF, which is cardboard, essentially very thick cardboard, to real wood. All six of these RVs have solid wood doors. That's the best quality that you can have. With the cabinet boxes, they all stepped it down a little bit in quality using something called lumber core. What lumber core is, the middle is just sticks or boards, and then they laminate it on either side with something. You still have some chance of water getting in here swelling this edge, but it's nowhere near as bad as if the entire board is MDF. So all in all, for lumber core, I'll give it a three out of five points. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. On the Brinkley, I actually give them an extra bonus point because the drawers, instead of being plywood boxes, they are solid wood dovetail jointed boxes. This is very high quality drawers. It's better than any RV that I've seen. So when I add together my scores for cabinets and countertops, Brinkley wins this round. For round two, we're looking at the air conditioning units. For Grand Design and Alliance, all of these have Coleman Mach air conditioners. I've had to replace a decent number of these that lost their Freon within two to three years. I'm giving them an eight out of 10 score. On the Brinkley, they have Furion air conditioners. Now, these actually are relatively new to the market. I've worked on a number of the medium profile Furion air conditioners, but the low profile one literally never touched it. The jury's still out. I don't have any real reason to complain about them. Brinkley wins round two. For round three, we're gonna look at refrigerators. Now, all of these units have 12 volt refrigerators. It's important to keep in mind that not all brands of 12 volt refrigerators are equal. Last episode, we looked at a Everchill brand refrigerator, and I think those are just junk. Most of these RVs have a Furion, which is an eight out of 10 in my book. The most reliable one, in my opinion, would be the Norcold 12 volt refrigerator, which is why I give it a nine out of 10 rating. Alliance is actually split. Their Avenue has the Furion, their higher end Paradigm has the Norcold. I'd say Alliance, wins round three halfway.
For round four, we're looking at the water heaters. Both Grand Design and Brinkley have chosen to use the Furion tankless water heater. There's a sensor that if wind blows rain in the wrong direction, it can fill up the sensor and then stop working. You get no hot water until you clean out that sensor. This is just a dumb design on the appliance, which is why I give an eight out of 10 for both Brinkley and Grand Design. So for Alliance, they've chosen to use a suburban brand tankless water heater. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. So for this round, I'd say Alliance wins. So the next category we're going to look at on the rigor scale is furnaces. Everybody's using a suburban brand furnace. I have no real complaints about them. So 10 out of 10 for everyone. It's a tie. So for round six, we're looking at suspension and drivetrain. And honestly, they're pretty much all set up the same way. I give all of them a 10 out of 10. For this round, it's a tie. For the next round, we've got on the exterior, the frame and the roofing systems. For Alliance and Brinkley, I'd give them a solid five points in both categories or a 10 out of 10. Grand design though, we got to have a tie. So for Grand Design Reflection, their lower end trailer, I give it a 10 out of 10. It's it's fine in my book. The upper end, Grand Design Solitude, and, and this is particular to the 390RK. We got some serious issues here, folks. So if you've read the internet, you're probably aware that there's been lots of issues with frames just breaking, both on towables and fifth wheel RVs. Anytime this happens, everyone starts pointing fingers, trying to figure out who's responsible for the frame breaking in half. Sometimes it's user error. Sometimes it's a manufacturing default. In this case, with the 390 RK in particular, this is a design flaw from Grand Design, the manufacturer of the RV. You've got like two big beams going down front to back in your RV, and then there's little triangular pieces that come out to support the wall edges. Those triangular pieces are called outriggers. Not all outriggers are made the same. The outriggers that are underneath the slide outs about midway through the RV, you can see how there is a reinforcing bend at the bottom of it. I call this a Z-shaped outrigger. Whereas the outriggers that are supporting the walls by the kitchen is just straight. There's no reinforcing to it, which means when you put a lot of weight on the outside of the wall, to make this rear kitchen model, it can collapse the outriggers. One of my viewers sent me photos of his 390RK and he was literally on the way home from the dealership. He stopped at a truck stop and found that the floor was buckling inside his RV because these outriggers were collapsing. I don't know if I'm just setting my expectations too high to believe that an RV shouldn't just break in half on the way home, but that's my opinion. Alliance and Brinkley, for this round, it's a tie. So the next category we're gonna look at on the rigor scale is slide systems. So starting with Grand Design, both the reflection and the solitude, in the bedroom slide out, they use a Schwintex slide mechanism. I give them a six out of 10. It's a very meh slide system, like probably avoid it, but like it's not the end of the world if you do get it. And honestly, a lot of the problems with them are how they're installed and set up at the factory. So here's a little bonus tip from a tech. If you're shopping RVs and you're looking at one that has a Schwintex, if you look at this little V-shaped roller and you can spin it with your finger, that's good. If you can't spin it with your finger, that means there might be excessive weight resting on those rollers that shouldn't be there. That can be an indicator it was installed incorrectly, and I would suggest going and looking at a different unit. Part of the trick in buying a quality RV is not just finding a manufacturer that's like engineering things correctly, but making sure that the particular unit that you're looking to purchase doesn't have major defects. So while I was undercover inspecting RVs, I looked at a used a Alliance. And when I walked around and looked, I found that fender was partly missing from a blowout. A little piece of fender missing doesn't look like a big deal, but honestly, folks, when a tire blows out on an RV, it can do a tremendous amount of damage to other systems under the RV. That's something that really needs to be checked out. Something my salesman really didn't think to mention to me. That's why I've created my Don't Buy a Lemon guide. This guide will help you spot both some manufacturing defects and other problems to avoid when you're shopping for an RV. You can get my Don't Buy a Lemon guide for free on my website. While we're on the topic of tire blowouts, a lot of people have this attitude that they just happen sometimes and it's not avoidable. If you haven't seen already, I have a course on tool-free RV maintenance and module number two is actually talking all about tires and how you can reduce the risk of blowout on your RV and reduce the amount of damage that blowouts do. Because folks, tire blowouts can actually cost you tens of thousands of dollars of repair. So if you want to learn the best way to avoid blowouts on your RV, as well as get 14 other tips, five minutes, 
cheap and easy things you can do that will save you up to $50,000 in repair costs. You should go to howtonotbreakyourrv.com to learn more about what the course covers. Let's talk about slide systems on the Alliance. For the Paradigm, they're still using the Schwintec slide mechanism, so I give them a 6 out of 10 rating. But on the Avenue, they actually switched from Schwintec to the BAL AccuSlide. If you haven't seen my video about the BAL AccuSlide system, I hate them because if the cables are too tight, they can break. If they're too loose, they can break. And when they break, they can actually bend the frame of your RV. In order for them to not tear themselves up and damage your RV, you have to adjust the cable tension on the AccuSlide system regularly. On this particular alliance, they used a particular configuration that is particularly problematic. The cable adjusters are underneath the slide instead of on top, which means it's nearly impossible to get to. I've heard of some people that had an AccuSlide system like this on the bedroom slide, and they could not get a service center to adjust it because it was too difficult. So it's kind of like they put in not only a ticking time bomb, but one where you can't even disarm it. I give a 0 out of 10 on the Brinkley, both the Z2900 and 3100. On the bedroom slide, I was very glad to see they're using the Lippert Slim Rack system. I've never had to work on one. I've had to work on a ton of Schwintex and BAL Accu slides. So the Slim Rack system, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Brinkley is the winner for slide systems. Now let's talk about plumbing. Some manufacturers don't know how to plumb an RV, and it shows. In addition to being a certified RV tech, I'm actually also a licensed general contractor. And folks, plumbers are not allowed to do this in houses because it leaks. That's why it's against code. So spark notes on plumbing is this flexible tubing is not designed for this type of fitting. This fitting should only be with a rigid PEX tubing. If you see a connection like this, run. So which manufacturers know how to plumb RVs and which ones don't? Let's start with some good news here. Alliance RV was plumbing their RVs incorrectly, but they got user feedback saying that this was creating leaks. Since 2021 on, all Alliance RVs are plumbed correctly. 10 out of 10 for Alliance. Now we have to contrast this with Grand Design. Grand Design is some of the worst plumbed RVs that I have ever seen. These connections are everywhere, underneath, inside. I've heard multiple reports of RVs that because they use this problematic plumbing connection directly on the water heater. When that hose gets hot, it can just pop off and gush water everywhere inside the camper. Folks, if you were going to actually buy one of these and like replumb it, this would be incredibly difficult because of the way the hoses go underneath the frame. You have to like gut the RV underneath to replumb it correctly. I give a zero out of 10 for these two Grand Design trailers because of how extensive the plumbing nightmare is. So how did Brinkley do? Brinkley... I I love how much they're trying here. They actually upgraded to brass fittings and PEX tubing through most of the RV. On the Z3100, they used incorrect plumbing going from the water pump into the water system. I expect that to create leaks in the cargo bay. On the Z2900, because they have a sink and a slide out in the bedroom, they actually did this incorrect plumbing all inside the RV, like underneath the sink and the slide out, and then also down in the cargo bay. Although the plumbing problem is not as extensive as on a grand design, you really don't want these types of connections in cabinets or a slide out. I have to give zero points in this category of both Brinkley's. So for plumbing, Alliance is the clear winner. So the last and final category we're going to talk about here is fit and finish. Grand Design actually did pretty okay in the fit and finish category. One of them had a creak in the step that was like super annoying and you probably won't want that creak every time you're going into your bedroom either. The other one was fine. I gave it a 10 out of 10 and then a 9 out of 10. They might not know how to plumb an RV, but they at least put things together pretty cleanly. The Brinkley fit and finish wise was like a breath of fresh air. Everything was perfect. Everything was tight. Everything was pretty, very well executed. Executed. 10 out of 10 to Brinkley. And then we come to Alliance. <laughs> I, oh man, bless your heart. The lower end model, I give a 7 out of 10. It had a couple of minor things here and there that were not tight. But when I stepped into the Alliance Paradigm, higher end one, I was shocked. I could put my fingers between the trim of the cabinet right by the front door. I look up at the ceiling and there's a light literally falling out of the ceiling. There's other trim that's like coming apart on the entertainment center. And then I start opening cabinet drawers in the bedroom. I almost got a wood splinter in my finger. I'm like, folks, do you not know what sandpaper is? What technician was putting drawers into this cabinet with these massive wood splinters hanging off and thinking, it'll be fine. 
Was no one checking like the quality of the cabinets that day or what happened? I feel like there's this general trend with independent RV makers where when they first start, they're doing a really great job, kind of like Brinkley. And then things start to go downhill as they ramp up their production. I feel like Alliance may be getting to that point where they're starting to see a lot more quality control issues. So for the Grand Design Reflection, their total score point is 76. And for the Grand Design Solitude, they actually got a 73, ironically lower than the lower end RV. Because they used this very, very problematic plumbing, and it's so extensive on these RVs, I actually have to give both Grand Designs an F. In addition, the 390RK in particular has serious structural issues. For that one, it's kind of like a double F. Would I buy a Grand Design? Absolutely not. For the Alliance Paradigm Solid B trailer, if the fit and finish wasn't so terrible, this would be an A grade trailer. When you're looking at $103,000 for an RV, this kind of quality control is not what I would expect. It's really not what I would even accept. The Alliance Avenue, on the other hand, only got 80 points. And this is largely due to their choice to put in the BAL AccuSlide system. Even though this totals 80, which is technically a B, for the slide system alone, I have to give this trailer an F. And now we come to the Brinkley, the Z2900 and 3100. They each get 85 points, which is a B grade trailer. The reason it's only 85 and not 95 is the plumbing problem. I know this is going to be controversial because the Brinkley is the great new shiny toy on the market everybody's asking about. Like, is Brinkley really that great? I think in a lot of ways it is really that great. Like, they're beautiful trailers, they're very well executed. But come on, folks, if you're going to pay over $100,000 for an RV, it should come with proper plumbing. I have to give it an F on my rigor scale because of this hugely problematic plumbing. If you have to buy one, I would really recommend buying the 3100 and not the 2900 is the 2900 has plumbing in the slide out and that's going to be really difficult and hard to fix. So who wins here? Which is the best RV? <laughs> Man, I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> It's kind of like a three-way shootout where everyone shot themselves in the foot. Technically, Alliance is the winner here in this lineup because their paradigm is the only one that I can give a letter grade to and not just an F. But I don't know, man. It was in rough shape. Leave a comment below and let me know who you think won in this lineup. Well, I'm not sure there's a right answer. There's definitely a wrong answer. If you're thinking grand design, go back and rewatch this video and watch my plumbing problem video. There's a clear loser here. The real winner here, folks, I think is you. After my last video where I might or might might not have said that the East to West trailer was a glorified cardboard box with a water sprinkler in it. The uh, founder of the company reached out to me saying that they were looking into this issue with the plumbing. Fingers crossed, no promises yet, but we'll see. You can share this video with your friends. You have the power to bring about kind of a reckoning with the RV industry and to demand better products from these manufacturers. So folks, after last review video and this one, you're probably sitting there wondering if there's any RV that I would give an A grade to. And the answer is yes. I've reviewed over 120 RVs just for this season. And there are definitely some A grade trailers out there. So if you want to know what those are, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want to know exactly when I release a new video and I look forward to sharing more details about what RVs are quality in future episodes of Undercover RV Tech. Until then, go and don't break your RV.